Hello and welcome and thanks for joining me for another week. Today we're going to be uh, discuss beginning a fitness routine. Now I know for some of you I just cursed you out but that's okay you are yeah, right. Um, but it's definitely a beneficial addition to your overall journey. I never want anybody to feel condemned for not being further along in their exercise journey. Instead, just start from where you are because, you know, we all fall off and one day turns into a week and two weeks and, you know, it just happens. So the, the most important thing is to just be intentional about following your strategy. So one of the definitions for fitness is the quality of being suitable to fulfill a particular role or task. So it does not necessarily pertain to just physical health. It can be your spiritual, financial, mental, and emotional health as well. However, to achieve fitness, it will take acuity, which is your interest. You know, you have to be interested in it. Uh, endurance, which is the power of enduring an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving up. It must take your focus, which is the, it must be the center of your attention, or at least, you know, in your realm of attention and concentration, a point of concentration. Uh, you also have to have a strategy, which is a plan or method to carry out you know, your fitness goals and then your established goals, you know, the end towards what you're wanting to achieve. So in preparing to begin your fit, fit, physical fitness journey, um, it's important to obtain mental acuity while developing a strategy to help you focus on your established goals, but it will require that you endure the necessary changes needed to achieve this. So it's, it's all about you. It's up to you on um, doing that. You know, you have to be the one that, you know, carries it out. So this is not a race. So please go at your own pace as this should serve as a starting point to build upon. Um, and part of your strategy is identifying a time that is convenient for your physical activity. It could be in the morning uh, before you get up to go to work. Uh, it could be in the evening where maybe if you live in a hotter state, like in Texas, it's been like 98 degrees every day for like three months now. Um, so sometimes in the mornings it's cooler or in the evening. Um, but depending on where you are, you know, just find a time that works best for you. If it's on your lunch hour, I used to do that as well. And just take 30 minutes and just do a walk around the building or wherever, you know, a safe place is. But before you begin an exercise routine, if you have any risk factors, I do encourage you to consult with your doctor or professional. Um, some preliminary things you can do is to begin stretching in the morning when you get out of bed during the day and before bed. This will definitely make a difference when you begin your full workouts because your body will kind of be used to the stretching and the movement, especially if you have not done it before or on a consistent basis. So some types of exercising that you can do is walking. You can start with maybe 20, 30 minutes a day. Um, if you want to try to build up your mileage, um, I like to run, so I'm always talking about mileage. Uh, it, a, a mile is about 30, 40 minutes, depending on how fast or slow you walk. Um, running is also another type of exercise. Again, like I said, I enjoy, thoroughly enjoy running. Um, I ran the Chicago Marathon in 2010, as well as the Half Marathon in 2010, which was, it just kind of jump-started my running, you know, love for running. So a tip that helps me if you're going to run, a tip that helps me is to identify a starting and stopping point. So if I am starting my run, I usually walk first. Um, I'll say, okay, at this tree, sh tree shrub, I'm going to start running. And then at that stop sign, I'm going to stop. So most times I'll go beyond the stop sign, but at least get, it gives me um, a mile marker you know, of starting and stopping so I don't tire myself out, especially if it's a warm day. Another way you can exercise is doing free weights. If you don't go to a gym, you can also use cans or jugs filled with water. Um, just make sure that the, the top of the jug has a screw on top where if you move it, the water won't spill out. Um, or, or if you have something that's kind of weighty, you know, whatever has some kind of weight to it to build that resistance in your in your arms and, you know, legs. Lunges are good. Squats are good. 
wall squats are good, things like that. Um, you can also do swimming, skating, biking, whatever works for you, whatever you enjoy doing that, you know, promotes physical activity and some exertion. Also, I learned um, Tiffany Montgomery, she had mentioned several months ago about a prayer walk. She does prayer walks. And so I, I do that every once in a while. And what I would do is like listen to YouTube, uh, either music, Christian music or messages you know, Christian messages, you can do a podcast, you can do, you know, just listen to whatever, or just pray, you know, just pray as you walk. And I've experienced that it is so much revelation that comes when I uh, walk. It's just amazing. You know, when I do that and purpose to do that, it's just awesome. So it's a, a key. Um, the key is just to find something that you really enjoy doing, which makes it easier to maintain and be consistent and committed to it. Uh, I do want to say also, if you're running, make sure that you condition yourself first, running or walking. Uh, running can be a great form of exercise if you properly prepare for it. It's important that your body is able to support whatever length of time you're running. So you must build your cardio, strengthen your abs, which is your core, often called your core, uh, strengthen your arms, your legs, and surprisingly, your, sh your shins. Um, the front part of your leg, at the front part of the bottom of your leg. So it's, it's definitely important. And trust me, your body will thank you if you stretch that out a little bit beforehand. Uh, a great resource that I've used to help me have some sense of community and also running, running tips is a uh, rock and roll marathon. They have rock and roll marathon series. That's the group that I ran the marathons with in 2010 and have run since then. So each weekend they'll have a different challenge and it could be like 30 minute exercise. It could be a mile, it could be five miles. You know, it just varies depending on their program, but it's a great way to create community. It's a great way to stay on track and, you know, feel like you're, getting something for what you're doing if that's your thing like i love metals and so yeah it's it works for me but it's important also another tip is to not overextend yourself you are not in a competition so pace yourself and definitely listen to your body and the more you exercise you will find that you're able to do more but that does take time takes time but consistency is key uh, so other tips to remember when exercising is to breathe through your nose and out your mouth. So taking a deep breath, sometimes that's not as um, automatic. You know, we just kind of breathe, you know, we don't really focus on how we're breathing. You know, most people breathe through their mouth, you know, which I do, you know, we do, we all do it. But um, breathing through your nose and out your mouth helps to have that flow of oxygen, proper oxygen through your body. Uh, drink plenty of water to make sure you're hydrated. Keeping your arms above your waist is also a good uh, method when you're running, running or walking to make sure you maintain a level heart rate. Uh, wearing loose fitting clothing, uh, especially moisture wicking clothing because if you and it should say on the tag if it's moisture wicking it's very important to uh, help with chafing if you have any chafing from like your sweat you know getting on your socks or your clothes it actually like the name says moisture wicking it absorbs the moisture so that you don't feel that discomfort while you're walking or running or exercising also wearing comfortable shoes. You can actually go to Fleet Feet or Run On or some type of store that can measure your feet for you and also maybe check your gait. Um, so they recommend shoes based off of how your feet are as well as how your gait is so that, you know, as you're running, running and walking, it is designed specifically for you so that you have a more comfortable walk or run. And also walking on soft soft surfaces, such as grass or a track that has maybe astral turf or a running track that's open to the public. It just helps you to lessen the impact on your joints. Um, again, please don't overexert yourself and take it slow. And make sure that you replace your ex your electrolytes once the workout is complete. Each person is different. However, our bodies vary, and our bodies vary in what we need. However, uh, 
you use everybody loses electrolytes when you sweat uh like potassium sodium and magnesium but those are there's others that um you lose you know throughout your body when you work out um through the sweat but those three potassium sodium and magnesium if you are deficient in those in any way not if you work out or not they can cause major issues um like stroke um, sciatica um, and magnesium is definitely important because it can cause muscle cramps um, and also heart issues in the book ultimate healing system it states that many heart conditions are due to a lack of electrolytes and existing allergies that can inflame the heart so it's very very important and I, I would you know say that there are a lot of people that are dealing with these issues that may not even know that they're related to deficiencies in vital minerals so it's very very important one of the electrolyte uh, one of the ways or at least three of the ways that i uh, replace electrolytes after a workout is i'll do coconut water um i'll also do juicing uh where i combine different fruits and vegetables and do that or I'll also do a smoothie and make sure that I just give, you know, put in the smoothie what I need to replenish my body. So I'll go over some safety tips that I've um, learned along the way. Is to make sure that you eat before and after your workouts, you know, to make sure that you get, you, again, you're giving your body what it needs. Uh, wearing the right clothes, making sure that they're not too tight. And if they are form fitting, making sure that they, you know, they have some flexibility uh, to it. So you're not constricting your body as you're moving because that can cause issues as well. Um, not really a safety tip, but if you want to carry a fitness tracker with you just to kind of help you track your miles and also an exercise belt that you can keep your key, your keys and your phone in. Uh, I think five below they have um, exercise belts that you can use and this is the one I use so I put my phone here and it has a touch screen so when I put my phone in there I could still you know uh, touch on an app answer a call or whatever and it has a zipper on the back with the separator so my phone goes here and then I could put my keys and my ID on this part and then it buckles around my waist. So my hands are free. So I can um, have my water. I usually carry water with me. Um, yeah, so I usually just carry the water with me. I don't usually try to have anything in my hands, um, but I also carry mace with me as well. So, you know, if I'm running or walking by myself, um, I make sure that I have what I need to make sure that I'm safe. Another safety tip is to plan your route. Make sure it's a safe route. I don't recommend uh, going into areas that you are alone for extended periods of time, you know, open roads, the side of the highway, whatever, you know, to make sure that you're in a safe place where you can, uh, if you need help, um, that you can call for help. Uh, also to keep the volume low on your headphones so that you can hear you know, if a, if a, a horn is honking, honking or somebody is calling your name or calling for help or, call, you know, just so you can hear and for your own safety. So hopefully all of those tips helped you. Uh, so remember, exercise does not have to be strenuous or laborious. It just has to be consistent to obtain the overall results of strength and stamina. Um, I'll tag there some of the resources below so that you can have them for your your, as you you know prepare for your uh, workouts. So again, thank you for joining me and I will see you all next week. Until then, have a blessed week.